Hello everyone, today I thought we would cover creating a wiki similar to the one we're looking at and we're going to be doing it using a little bit of Docker magic. Now thankfully this wiki we're looking at has instructions for how to run this wiki that we're looking at which is a little bit strange but we're going to reference this wiki to create this wiki. So to get started we're going to run a rails new command. We'll say rails new video and then we'll pass in the dash dash main because that pulls it from the Rails GitHub page. And the main branch is currently on Rails 7.1, which includes a Docker file out of the box, which means we have to do a lot less thinking than we normally would. Now there is one change we have to make to the Rails Docker file. So CD into our video, we'll do a code dot. And that change involves the uh, pretty cringy uh, auto encryption that happens with Rails. Uh, because you know security or whatever uh, gross but we have to come into our master key file we have to copy what's in here we can then close this come down to our docker file and you can either put this in an environment fi uh, file and pass it in or you can just specify it like this which is not the way to go for your uh like security uh oops this needs to be rails master key uh, but it works for the purposes of this video. So you can either do this or you can right click on your application somewhere, do a new file.env. You can then paste in the Rails master key equals just like this. And then you can, when you run the file, run it with a dash dash env flag to specify that there is a env file. I'm going to leave it like this though. Uh, and we'll just ignore the .env file for now. Okay, so that's the change for the Docker file. Now let's go ahead and let's create a docker-compose.yaml file. In the docker-compose.yaml file, we want to copy this uh, Docker Compose. All of this will be in the video description, source, source code included. Uh, so we're gonna copy this in and then we're gonna do a bit of config here. Now this will go pretty fast because I don't wanna keep you here all day. Uh, and we can uh, go ahead and do uh, what we need to. So the first thing in here that we want to do is we probably want to specify maybe a uh, listen address for Postgres. If you want to do that, you can pass in a command like this, where you say Postgres-C for the listen address and set it to whatever you would like. Uh, I'm going to omit that for now. That's just something to consider. Uh, we do have a set of volumes to create. Now, thankfully, those will get created for us, but we do also want to specify a network. The network, of course, we have to specify down here at the bottom as well. This network is something we do need to manually manage. So what we'll do uh, is we can, uh, well, actually, I guess we can come over here and we can say like external, right? Oops, external true. And that should also do it. But if we already have one, we have to do a Docker network uh, RM for Rails is what it's called, right? And now if we do a Docker Compose up, this should work. But the other thing we want to change in here is make sure this is running on 3001 because Rails is going to be running on 3000 and we don't want to use port 80 for that. That's kind of gross. And then for our volumes here, we need to make sure that we specify that we are doing a type of bind to a source, which is slash wiki. So we'll create that slash wiki. And then inside of slash wiki, it's uh, config.yaml. So we'll say config.yaml. And you can see here the target is going to be in the uh, Docker container for slash wiki slash config.yaml. So we're just kind of mimicking that. In terms of what's in the config, there's another link in the video description to this uh, GitHub page that has a template for a uh, wiki.js config. You can come in here, you can change the port to 3001, you can change the host to DB. And speaking of which, this is a, the name of the Docker container that's running the Postgres database. So let's make sure that this has a container name set to DB. And let's make sure wiki has a container name set to wiki, just like that. That allows us to specify the host here in the same way that we can specify the host in the uh, the database.yaml by doing a host and then grabbing that environment variable as we pass it in. So that'll just be like a, the equivalent of host colon DB, right? Okay, so that's that. Now let's go ahead and let's come down to our readme. This is where some of the magic happens. So we'll just hit control A and then we'll paste this in. So this is the set of commands we're gonna be running. This again will be in the video description. 
uh, just go to the source code. First thing I want to do is run a docker build T app. This should hopefully build the application. And while that's running, we can come over to another tab that I have over here. And we can do a Rails G controller pages home to create a home page. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it's upset for some reason. So let me CD out of here and CD back into video and try that again. And hopefully that works. There we go. Okay, so let's come into our config and our routes. Oops, our routes.rb. And we'll just say this needs to be a root to pages home. And then we'll say something like define wiki path to http colon slash slash localhost port 3001. And hopefully this works. So we can get wiki to a redirect. So let's go to our app, our views, our pages, and our homepage. And we'll just do a quick little link to the wiki. And hopefully this will uh, do some auto completion for us. Just like that. Uh, uh, that's not really what I wanted. We'll do a wiki underscore path and we'll give this a shot. So let's run a Rails S just to make sure this works. Come over to localhost port 3000. Check this out. Click on the link and hopefully this takes us to a git for wiki. There it is. Takes us to the localhost port 3001. Cool. So uh, what we now want to do is do the docker up for our uh, compose file. So we don't have the container running yet, but that's okay. We can actually go ahead and start the uh, wiki server. So we'll do a docker compose up. I'm gonna omit the dash D that just causes it to run in the background. Uh, oops, we need to, I guess, not do the external, but it's fine. We'll do a docker network create for rails, and then we can do a docker compose up to start this. And as we start this, we'll hopefully see it connect to the database. Uh, it really depends on if this wants to work. It doesn't look like it does. So let's come into our uh, Docker compose file. Let's come into here and instead of doing that, let's come down here and make sure that our wiki is on the uh, networks of Rails. So we just do dash Rails. And now if we do a Docker compose up, this should hopefully work should connect to the database, tells us it's starting, and it says localhost port 3001. So there we go, 3001 is now up and running. I'm actually gonna go to it on this page, and on this one, I'm gonna go back to localhost port 3000, uh, and then hopefully we can do a, wherever a readme is, we can do a docker volume create to create our volume for a Rails app, and then we can do a docker run with the dash dash rm dash it, we give it a name of rails underscore app, a dash d to run it in the background, a dash dash network of rails. We tell it to run on port 3000 and use the image we just built up here, which was called app. So we can run that. Now we can go over to localhost port 3000, hopefully. Uh, and it tells us this page doesn't exist. So we do need to uh, rebuild our app image. And then while that's running, we need to stop our Rails server again. So we'll stop it. And then hopefully we can uh, try to run this. So we'll do it the docker run command again. That'll start it. Now we can come over here and this should have a root. And now we can click this and it takes us to the wiki. Beautiful. I'm going to go back again. We can come in here. We'll set up an email. Dean at example doc. Oops. Example dot com. Not like it matters. Uh, oops. Uh, and then we'll say password of password. So let me just verify password and password looks good. Uh, don't allow telemetry. And then for the URL, you can set this to whatever you would like. It's just for whenever you set up your SSL certificate. We'll click install. It'll say finalizing. It'll go through this. And then we should hopefully have our wiki. And we'll test out the features a little bit. Uh, but really, the only feature we care about testing is going to be toggling the dark mode. Because that was like the one thing that, uh, you know, I felt needed its own wiki page. So I'll say dean at example.com, password of password, logs me in. And at this point I can either create a home page or do some administration. I'll use the markdown template. I'll say this is the uh, home page, I guess, home page. And then we can do okay. And then we'll say, I don't know, home and something like hi. Oops, hi. Create the page that gives us a home page to look at. Super cool, super cute. And then we can come over here, 
create another new page. This one will go to slash rails slash hello slash readme or something. We'll hit select, markdown, uh, readme, or read, I guess, readme. And we can uh, grab our readme.md. Let's actually just paste this in here, right? So you can see our markdown immediately gets the uh, syntax highlighting. That's very cool. We can click create. That will create this page under the uh, slash rails slash hello directory. So we can now come back to the root, go to the home page, and then we can click on this main menu and it toggles between a nav menu and our uh, navigation pages or tree or whatever. If we come over to our administration, we can come over to the navigation real quick. And in the navigation, we can click add, click link, change the link to rails, we can then come over here, change the target type to external HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 3000. And you would of course change this to like your, your actual domain name in a production application, but you get the idea. And then the last thing we can do is come over to the theme and we can set the dark mode, click apply. And now we can exit out of our admin settings and we now have the homepage. We have the rails section over here with the readme that has the syntax highlighting and some comments that work. And then we can click on the menu button and click on Rails, and that'll take us back to a Rails app. We can click on the link in the Rails app and that takes us back to the wiki. So there you go, it's fully integrated. It's running out of Docker. We didn't have to install any of the cringy uh, NPM stuff on our machine. It's in a Docker container, so we can blow it away when we're done with it. And of course, our data is persisting because we mounted the Postgres database and the data for it on the server or on the, uh, I guess in this case, on the computer. Uh, so if we stop the Postgres server and start it again, we still have that data. That's enough of me on my soapbox. Uh, hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful. And hopefully I will see you in tomorrow's tutorial.